I have about 10 pounds here. Um, this is a good amount of clay. Um, I'm using Klamath Yellow. Uh, it's a really nice clay. Uh, I ran a little bit on the soft side of this batch, which is perfect for throwing big. Uh, you're definitely gonna want some softer clay. Uh, make sure you wedge it well. Softer is just gonna allow you to manipulate more if you have it too, um, too dry or just too stiff. You're just gonna have so much trouble moving it. Uh, gonna give it a little bit of wedging here. Um, yeah, so I mean, wedging is super important in any work you do, especially on the wheel. Helps keep air bubbles out. Um, and it also aligns the particles with clay really nicely, um, which is super cool. Uh, creates stronger bodies. And especially if you're throwing functional wear, it's definitely needed. You can also wedge in a way that I am too on the wheel or do both. I would recommend both. Uh, Cause this way I'm doing it now helps kind of center it a bit. Um, yeah. Wow, this is pushing a lot. I've never thrown this much on this wheel yet. So we will see how it goes and how well she handles it. I think once I get it centered, she should be good. All right, no more wedging for that. We're just gonna start throwing, I guess. Uh, so one of the biggest things for throwing, especially once you start going bigger, um, and big can kind of mean anything to you. It can mean anywhere, whether you're used to just throwing a pound, going up to three pounds, or whether it's you're used to throwing five or six pounds and you're starting to move up to 10, or however big it may be. Uh, make sure your wheel can handle it, unlike what mine just handled. Uh, wasn't too happy with me. Uh, we're gonna do our best, but the big thing is spend time on centering. That is going to be the death of you or it's gonna be your biggest help. Um, so I just started opening it up. Um, you can see it's pretty on center. The whole time while you're opening it up and pushing it down, you're gonna wanna push in constantly too. Uh, this is gonna help you keep on center because if you're doing, if you're pushing down or you're pulling out the floor, uh, while not holding the outside, one, this is gonna kind of push it out and this top layer is just gonna kind of topple over and just kind of create this lip underneath, uh, making it more prone to falling. Uh, yeah, so always make sure while you're doing it, you're holding on the outside and pushing in just from here down. Uh, it's gonna help you so much when you start throwing big. Um, and also, once you start going bigger, a big thing is going to be your floor. Every piece that you use is gonna be kind of, uh, everything that you do for smaller pieces is going to be as more important for bigger pieces because they're bigger. They take a little more technical work and just a little skill to get going. Uh, so uh, when you're making your floor, typically you're gonna to be told to make it about a fourth to a half inch. I usually start at like three fourths of an inch thick and then compress it. Um, this is going to help me create a strong floor. Let's see how wide I'm going to go here. Let's try to go a little bit wider than normal. All right. So, uh, I created about, it's probably a five, six inch base. Uh, and this is going to kind of open up a little more and then it'll close a little bit. So I'm just going to take a rib, uh, this is my favorite rib, find any rib that you like, and just kind of compress the floor. Uh, and it'll help even out the floor. It'll help you give you floor strength. Um, the wider you go, I don't know if anyone is into throwing platters or plates, you will learn that S cracks are your worst nightmare. And a good floor, aligned well, compressed well, is going to be a big help. So spend some time on the floor, make sure it's well, 
Um, it's flat, it's the way you want it to be. Uh, it's the width you want it to be uh, because you're not gonna be able to open it any wider. I'm gonna go actually a little bit wider than I just did. Uh, I can give it another compression, let's slow that down. Um, also, once you start going bigger, you're gonna want everything to be a little bit thicker than when you do a foot or just like a pound or two pounds. Uh, once you start kind of going up to three, four, five, any, anything higher than that, uh, you're gonna want it to be thicker. That's gonna make you do a slower firing schedule, but that's okay just because when you get that big workout, it's something you're gonna be proud of. Uh, remember when I was in college and I threw a three foot pot, uh, three foot tall pot. It was, took a lot of work. Um, the walls were probably at the thinnest point, three fourths inch in. All right, now we're gonna set the wall uh, or about a half inch thick. And the thickest point was probably about three fourths to almost an inch thick. Uh, it just helped with strength. All right, so now I'm gonna set the wall, kind of set it up here. Uh, I don't really know what shape I'm doing. I'm just kind of going over the dynamics of this. Uh, when you're throwing any time, but especially when you're throwing big, uh, don't let the wheel control you. And what I mean by that is when you're throwing, you're gonna have a propensity to pull towards yourself, uh, especially when you're sitting. Um, so when you're pulling and you're doing, uh, you're doing big things, make sure you're kind of with your outside hand, I'm a righty. So I'm going to be showing with an outside hand, uh, you're going to be pushing in. So you're going to kind of be creating like this volcano shape that's going to come in. It's going to be so much easier to, to shape your pot when you're pushing in and you have the ability to go back out. It's gonna be a lot harder on your pot, a lot harder on you, more time to start going out and then go in. Uh, if you're making a bowl, go out. But if you're trying to throw tall, uh, always kind of start by pushing inward. Um, and so when you're also, so now we're gonna start kind of hitting the wall. Uh, take the first few poles to set yourself up well in the space you want it to be, in the place you kind of want it to look. Um, so I have a lot of clay down here. This is probably about an inch thick down here, inch and a half thick. So I have a lot of clay to pull, but that's fine. Um, when you're throwing big and you're starting to throw bigger, uh, when you pull clay, you're going to want to make sure you have always that strength at the bottom. Uh, that bottom strength is going to be crucial for you to hold your pot and you're going to probably leave it thicker. Um, for the most part, and then you're going to want to trim it. Uh, leave weight on the bottom. You're gonna use a little more clay on this, so as you go taller, the clay is not gonna to wanna to hold itself as much, and so you're going to want to make sure that you leave clay on the bottom for yourself to support your pot. Um, so you can see already there, when I was pulling there, it wanted to go out. Uh, don't let it. You can see that, uh, that is just as you get higher and farther away, the force of the spinning of the wheel is going to really want you to pull it out. Um, just physics. Sometimes physics is not our friend in here. Uh, I'm going to kind of set that lip, pull it in a little bit. Uh, one trick I kind of learned in high school was how to throw downward um, to kind of reset everything. Uh, it's not an aggressive thing, but it is, see, this is already going out on me. Let's try to go back in a little bit. Uh, just collar it a little bit. Take your time, love your pot. Uh, if you need to go slow, take your time. Learn to throw slow. It's gonna benefit you in the long term. Uh, because you can learn to control it and have your body motions be controlled all the way up. Uh, so now that I'm starting to actually get some height here, you can see it's starting to already get mad at me. Uh, Clay likes to just lay on the bottom of rivers. So it's not gonna be super happy with you trying to make it really tall. So take your time, uh, don't get frustrated. And a big thing is always make sure Whatever is touching the clay is anchored. 
Uh, and what I mean by that, whether you have taken classes or not, uh, to learn pottery or you learned on your own and you don't know what that means, uh, your body's the best anchor point, especially your abs, uh, your obliques. Um, it's gonna be the point where you really have the most grounding force and you can kind of lean into it and have a lot of force uh, to put back into the pot and not let it control you. Um, and so my top right now, which looks real thin to me already, I kind of threw it a little thin already, uh, which is I'm gonna go over it pretty quickly here to not let it get thinner. Uh, is probably about just over a quarter inch thick. Uh, I'm gonna call this back in. Um, it's probably getting closer to a half inch, which is a little thin for me when it comes to throwing big. Um, I'm gonna wanna leave it thicker. This bottom is still pretty thick. Um, and collaring is a lot harder. Uh, we might be just turning this thing into a bowl because sometimes clay does what it wants. Uh, but the principle is still lie. Uh, and even if you want, you can always, you don't have to start your pull at the bottom. Uh, if you leave clay, uh, this top part should starting to make me mad. I might just cut it. Uh, Yeah, she is not happy with me up top. Um, but, what was I saying? Oh yeah, you just wanna leave things thick. I can't stress that enough. Uh, this top is just coming off. It's gonna make me mad for the rest of this. I'm just gonna be done with it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so this is a better thickness. It's about a half inch thick. I made this a little too wide for myself. Uh, from the start, that was my mistake from the beginning. But you can see as I kind of collar this in, uh, it's gonna start behaving a little better because you want it to hold itself to up and down. Uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, so, I mean, for the most part, I'm not gonna shape this too much. I'm just gonna kind of get it tall um, for the point of this demo. Uh, And the clay will do what it wants to do, and you just have to give it loving touches, tell it what you want it to do. Um, people say the clay has a mind of its own. I don't believe that. I think if you learn how to touch clay well and you learn how to love clay well, um, it will love you back. So, I mean, if I would have kept that piece on, I would probably have another inch on this right now. But we're starting to get a little thin here. About what I want my wall thickness to probably be from about uh, about here, about from like here up. I probably have the thickness I want. So once I get to those spots, I'm gonna always finish my pull and pull through. Uh, and go all the way up to make sure that the walls are the way I want them and the shape I want them to be. Uh, I probably only have one or two bolts left with this. Um, but yeah, throwing big is very similar to throwing small. It's just all of your principles have to be a little more finely tuned. Uh, you have to learn how to put strength back into your pot and not let the pot control you. Uh, and it just takes time and practice, but it's worth it. Um, you can create some very big, beautiful pieces. Uh, if you have a kiln space, I do not, so this is gonna be smashed the minute this is done. Um, and I think this is probably my final pull. Uh, and I have a few other tools that I can come and clean this up, just clean up the foot with a uh, my foot trimming tool you use now, so I don't have to trim as much later. Uh, 
you know, this would make a really nice miso pot. You know, make some nice long-term miso. You could put water in it and hold a lot of water in it. Uh, I don't know. Possibilities are in this when you go bigger. Um, but those are kind of the principles of throwing bigger. Make sure you learn how to put force back into the pot. Uh, it will control you if you don't control it. Um, but it also wants to be controlled. So take your time. Uh, if you've thrown one pound, if you've thrown two pounds, I'd recommend going to four or five. Um, if you've thrown four or five, you know, try 10 pounds. Uh, especially once you start getting up to that 10 pound range, make sure your clay is nice and soft. You're just gonna use less water, but that's okay. Um, and then finally, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure your walls just stay on top of each other. The more you go out, the more weight and thickness you're gonna want in your walls. Uh, the more just turning and curving you have, you're gonna want more thickness in your walls. Um, just so that it supports itself because you need a lot of support in this. Um, yeah, and so for 10 pounds, uh, if I had my ruler near me, I could tell you how tall I got it. It's probably getting close to about a foot and a half, maybe two feet. Nah, it's probably getting close to a foot and a half. Not quite there. Uh, probably about 14 inches tall. Um, but it's easy. Uh, this is kind of it. Uh, I thanks guys for coming and spending time with me and showing, let me show you how to throw big. If you guys have any questions, reach out to us on throwing big. We're always happy to answer all of your pottery questions on helping you guys become just the best artist you can be and providing everything you guys need for it. Um, I like this shape, but I told you guys I'd smash it. So we're just going to end with smashing it and say goodbye. Uh, hope you guys all have a great night and enjoy throwing big.